Tacopa Pass up there. Kingston Peak. Welcome to Horse Thief Camp. The sign says that the Ute headman Wakara used to come here with stolen horses and he'd trade them with the Pegleg Smith for whiskey and other items. And that he had a relationship with the Mormon so-called prophet Brigham Young. That is not, of course, the whole story. Around the year 1833 or so, the prophet Joseph Smith had prophesied that the American Indians, whom he had called the Lamanites, which was a remnant of the tribe of Joseph, that is, Israelites, would join with the Latter-day Saints, rise up, destroy the government of the United States, take over the entire continent, and then eventually the entire planet, and create one huge kingdom called the Kingdom of God. Of course, <clears throat> the early Latter-day Saints had a hell of a lot of trouble with their neighbors, first in Illinois, and then in Missouri, and for damn good reasons, which I won't go into at the moment, it was not what they claimed, that is, religious persecution. There were some financial, economic, and other abuses that the Latter-day Saints inflicted upon their neighbors, which caused their neighbors to drive them out. Joseph Smith was murdered foully by a mob, and Brigham Young took over the group and moved to the Utah Territory in, if I remember correctly, around 1847, I believe. I could be wrong. For ten years, the Latter-day Saints struggled in the Utah Territory and they met up with the Ute, Ute headman Wakaram. Wakaram means yellow man because, like many of us these days, Wakaram used to paint his face yellow. Therefore, yellow man Wakaram. In 1953, there was what we call the Walker War where ranchers and part of the United States Army got together and tried to put down the horse thief trading that went on with uh, headman Wakaram and Joseph, uh, I mean, I should say Thomas Pegleg Smith, which kind of ended in a draw because the headman Wakaram was not captured. Headman Wak Wakaram finally uh, met up with headman Brigham Young and they uh, made a uneasy truce. Part of the trade that headman Wakaram engaged in was the slave trade and specifically the young girl and young women trade where he would capture Paiutes. Uh, at that time the Paiutes were what was considered a diminished tribe the, a series of diseases had wiped them out and, and made them a weak tribe. So the Utes would come and they'd swoop down on any Paiutes they could find. They would kill the men, they would kill the, um, the older males, keep the younger males, keep the girls, and keep the women, of course. They would then sell the uh, children and the uh, women two Mexicans in uh, New Mexico and also along the coast of California and the good Catholics would purchase them. Of 
course, at that time, slavery in uh, Mexico, New Spain, and California was against uh, the law, but indentured servitude was not. So what the Catholic, good Catholics would do, the priests and the nuns, they would purchase these uh, Paiute slaves from the Utes and then force the uh, indentured servitudes to work off that purchase. And of course, they would never, ever, no matter how much labor applied, work off the cost of being purchased. So it was pretty much indentured servitude until they got too old to work. And then, of course, they would be let free because their in servitude had been uh, paid off. Anyhow, Brigham Young and the Saints decided instead of paying for these slaves, they would just somehow negotiate that they would get the slaves for free or slaughter the Utes, one or the other. The Utes thought this was terribly unfair, even though the Saints had all the guns and they really had no choice in the matter. So the Saints purchased at a very, very low price um, some of the Paiutes, uh, which were then put into uh, the sex slave market among the Mormons. The little girl children were passed around to um, good, loyal Mormons uh, up in the church hierarchy. And the others were, of course, forced to work uh, off their indenture. Uh, servitudeness. This was actually also prophesied by the one and only prophet Joseph Smith when he said that eventually the so-called white people would mate with the Lamanites and turn the Lamanites into a quote, white and delightsome people, unquote. And you, the way to do that is to grab the girl children and the women and make them have babies. Not with other Paiutes, of course, but with saints. Didn't work out that way, however. Anyhow, Headman Huacura eventually became a friend of the saints until Huacura, which he was still engaging in his criminal horse thieving activities became too much of a political problem for the saints. The uh, ranchers in Southern California and Coastal California always wanted to get rid of Wakurum because he was depredating their horse herds. So one day, mysteriously, the day after uh, council was held by a few saints that went into Wakurum's uh, camp. They brought tobacco, bread, uh, some alcohol, and they held camp with Wakurum. The next day, Wakurum mysteriously up and died. Uh, the saints said he very likely died of pneumonia. The Utes and the Paiutes and the Pavans and others said Wakurum died from poisoned tobacco. This would be a problem for the saints because ever since that time when Wakurum died mysteriously, suddenly, <clears throat> and pneumonia generally takes a long time to kill somebody, but Wakurum died literally within a day of that visit. It became a problem with the saints because whenever the saints would show up as a um, among the Lamanites, and ask for counsel to take care of um, uh, what would be um, Indian agent uh, business. The so-called Lamanites would not trust them because they would show up with food and they'd, they'd think, well, they're trying to kill us because this food is poison. One example was that Brigham Young wanted to have a council among the southern Paiutes. Uh, t regarding the uh, overland immigrant um, wagon trains that were passing through uh, Salt Lake City and then along the Spanish Trail and then into Southern California. 
Brigham Young wanted to stop the um, the traffic along that trail because he was starting up a uh, uh, what is called the Mormon War in southern, um, southwestern United States among the United States Army in 1857. That's a whole nother story. Brigham Young wanted to stop the wagon train immigrant traffic going across the what he considered his uh, the kingdom of Deseret, of which he, of course, was the king. So he wanted to get a council among southern Paiutes, Paiutes, uh, Utes, Pavans, others. So he would show up, his council, his agents would show up and say, we would like you to come to the Great Salt Lake um, and council with um, head man Brigham Young. And they would show up with food and alcohol and other things. In one case, a um, couple, two agents showed up with a wagon full of bread, little, little loaves of bread, a couple hundred of them, as gifts to the Southern Paiutes. Southern Paiutes, remembering what happened to Wakurum, seized the agents, grabbed little loaves of bread and shoved them in the mouths of the uh, Latter-day Saints forced them to eat a few loaves of bread, then waited a couple hours to see if the saints would die from poison. Apparently, the saints did not die. Apparently, the bread was not poison, so the southern Paiutes went into Great Salt Lake area, and they held a council. Like I said, that was 19, 1857. Uh, late summer, around September. Early September, I should say. <sighs> Wakarum, not Walker, wa not Wakara, not um, the Walker War. I'm thinking of doing a whole series on the Mormon War that occurred in uh, late 1857, early 1858. But it would take a hell, I mean, a hell of a lot of time to do that properly. Anyhow, I am in the area which Wakarum used to hide stolen horses and wait for Peg Lake Smith to come and trade for them.